Hello, my name is Ellie Davison from the Foundation Study Centre in the College of Science. I'm just here to talk to you today about some success that we've had in moving an academic writing assessment online and um, having some really high engagement with student peer review. In previous years, the input for this task would largely be in the lecture theatre because of a large cohort of over 200 students. So students are asked to produce an argumentative essay based upon the research literature that they would find in primary scientific journals. Exemplar essays are posted on Blackboard for students to look at in their own time. And a group evaluation of a, an example submission is carried out led by lecturers in the lecture theatre. And students who are um, comfortable to contribute to those kind of large discussion environments would um, pick out things that were good and things that needed improving in that submission. There'd be a formative hand in and then peer feedback would take place in the group tutorial session. So the traditional swap in of your papers and then we would produce a, a feedback form for students to fill in that linked um, that feedback to various elements of the marking rubric. Now, some students thrived in that environment and received really good peer feedback, but Tutors did report that some students were less confident to carry out peer reviews um, and kind of critique each other's essays when they were face to face. So this year uh, we moved everything online because this took place in late 2020 when all teaching um, was done remotely. So the first tool that we utilised was TALIS Elevate. So TALIS Elevate allowed us to upload um, an example submission and for the entire cohort to evaluate it. So students highlighted particular sections of that essay and um, pointed out things that they thought had been done well and would meet the criteria on their marking rubric. And they also pointed out things that they thought could be improved. Comments were also um, used to pose questions both to each other, um, but also to the lecturer, if there was any areas of misunderstanding or things that they would like clarified. Posts could be anonymous, uh, which many students liked, or anonymous, so they could put their name to their comments. And those comments were uh, nested and threaded so that there was debate happening and that nice collaboration that we enjoy between students. This was carried out synchronously over Blackboard Collaborate. So the screen was shared and the lecturer was able to um, see those comments appearing live and contribute themselves. So able to pose questions to the students for them to answer um, that they thought would help to perhaps move the discussion along or bring things to the forefront of the discussion that were really relevant to the mark scheme. But students were then able to contribute later on to this process as the link to the submission remains live, so there's flexibility in how to participate. This is an example um, of an essay with the coloured areas that have been highlighted for, by the students and commented upon. As a lecturer, I found it really useful to be able to see these comments um, because I could tailor my teaching straight away if there were any areas that I thought really needed pulling out. Um, and you can kind of see how effective your teaching's been with how well students understand the task. We chose not to upload a perfect submission and there were good and bad things about the examples that we showed to students because we find that both elements benefit students. Seeing kind of common mistakes and errors and things that don't quite meet the mark scheme and um, helps students not make the same mistake and really helps them to internalise that mark scheme as well. But seeing uh, parts of submissions that are really good helps them to raise their game and to improve their work accordingly. Following the group submission on TALIS, we then moved on to the peer mark facility within Turnitin. So once you set up a Turnitin inbox, you can set up an associated peer mark um, inbox, which automatically um, distributes submissions between students. Students were asked to provide feedback for three of their peers, which also meant that they received three peer reviews. And we scaffolded the um, feedback by inputting particular questions into that peer mark inbox. And all those questions linked directly to elements of the marking rubric. 
we decided to put minimum word counts on those um, questions so that students couldn't just say yep or no. They had to actually um, elaborate and talk to their peers about how things could be improved. Um, again, this was a flexible kind of participation because we led a support session through Collaborate where students could um, input their feedback if they wished to, but they could also do this later if that was more convenient for them. Here's an example of a, um, a peer mark. You can see the little bubbles all over this essay where um, this reviewer has added particular comments. And then the questions down the right hand side that we've set as prompts as lecturers. Other settings that you can choose within Peermark are um, whether the students are assigned different essays to review randomly or whether they get any element of choice and picking essays that they want to um, review. We chose the random option because it's nice for students to see essays that they wouldn't necessarily be reading and about topics they wouldn't necessarily um, be engaging with. There's also the option um, to choose whether a student who hasn't submitted a formative themselves gets to take part in the peer review process. We chose that if you hadn't submitted a formative, you don't get to take part in the peer review process. And actually that had really unintended effects. Most people submitted, of course, but for the handful of students who didn't, we received emails saying, I really want to take part in this, um, this peer review process. Um, so kind of adding currency to getting peer review um, really kind of upped the stakes and students valued this process much more than I think that they had in previous years. And the kind of hidden curriculum of if you don't make a deadline, you're going to miss out was actually really important. One area where the students struggled was once they've completed all their questions, peer mark tells them that their review is complete, but actually it isn't pushed to their um, peer until they've pressed this gray submit button at the top here. That doesn't seem so complicated, but um, I literally ended up having to screenshot this button and send it out to students because so many of them missed it. So there's something you might wanna include in your input. As a lecturer, you get to see behind the scenes of the peer review. So for each student, you can see the three reviews that they've submitted and also the three reviews that they've received. So you can certainly keep an eye on engagement. If there ever is a problem, you can submit a review as an instructor instead to make sure that um, no student misses out. And if there are any queries, something that's been written in a peer review that a student uh, isn't quite sure about, you can go in and see that review and make any clarifications that you think are necessary. And um, we didn't, have to might write any instructor reviews because engagement was so good. Everybody who submitted a formative um, received three peer reviews. You can, if you wish, also assign credit or part of the score for this assessment to the review, either just by completing it or um, a graded um, score, depending on the quality of that peer review. We didn't do that, but that function is there. So how has this impacted upon student engagement? Students reported to us that they really like the facility to be able to review anonymously. It can be awkward uh, giving comments to your friends, um, so they really appreciated that. Um, in Talis Elevate, we found that about two thirds of students submitted their comments anonymously, and others were happy to have their name visible, so nice to have the choice. The opportunity for clarification was really highly valued. And I think in two ways. Firstly, for the students to be able to um, pinpoint areas of essays and ask for clarification from us, but also through TALIS for me to be able to add prompts and pick out areas um, of that essay that I wanted students to look at and get their, their viewpoints on it and see if they'd understood everything as I'd wished them to. The kind of two-step process worked really well. So having a guided scaffolded evaluation within uh, TALIS before they moved on to the individual peer reviews in Peermark um, meant that the, the quality of those peer reviews was really high. They were very um, explicitly linked to the mark scheme, detailing um, things that students could do to move their way up the rubric. And I think the quality um, has definitely improved.
links to the marking rubric. So both within the TALIS discussion and within the lecturer set question boxes within Peermark meant that students were so familiar with every aspect of that marking rubric. They'd internalised it, they'd applied it to lots of different submissions. Um, so they knew exactly what they needed to do in their own submission. The flexibility was definitely appreciated by students. So having the choice whether to um, carry out these activities over collaborate with the lecturer support or for students who have um, other commitments to be able to do this asynchronously um, at times that worked for them. And we embedded this in the tutorial system. So um, a conveniently arranged individual tutorial between peer review and the summative submission date means that we asked the students how they were moving forwards um, after they'd received their peer feedback. So making sure that they fed forward um, and, in, and improved their summative submissions appropriately. Was there anything that we do differently in future years? Um, I think once we're allowed back in lecture theatres to a certain degree, I would introduce these tools during a face-to-face -face session and perhaps do a little pilot of it so that, that students were familiar with the little tweaks and the submit button um, and went away feeling confident that they could do this um, in their own time. I would also consider actually doing a really, a truly blended session and having um, the lecture theatre discussion um, so that students who wanted to contribute verbally could do, and we could have that live flowing discussion. But also other students could sit there with their devices and contribute via comments with that displayed on the large screen so that you had that running dialogue. In terms of peer marking, I don't think we'd ever return back to swapping pieces of paper. Peer mark worked so well and students were emailing me literally saying, when am I getting my peer review? And we'd never had that before. So that was excellent. In terms of Tellers Elevate, I think if you had cohorts of, of much more than 20 students trying to work on one um, Tellers submission at the same time, especially if they're really engaged and, and do want to post lots of comments, that comment column can get really busy and then it, it gets a little bit hard to navigate. So I think for larger cohorts, I would set up multiple um, Tellers links, perhaps with different submissions in them. Um, and have kind of parallel sessions. The advantage of that being that after the event, um, students could go in and look at each different submission and might get different things from the different sets of comments um, because they stay there on the link right until the end of the module. How are we moving forward with this? Um, we're starting to use these tools in areas of the curriculum which are perhaps um, a bit less obvious. So this is a screenshot from Tom Hobson in maths who has used this to evaluate with students a research poster and that they had to produce by carrying out statistical analysis on certain data sets and presenting them visually. Um, this really helps students to think about the best way to display and to communicate their maths, as well as being able to evaluate um, the actual analysis. I'd be delighted to um, take any questions that you've got on anything that we've discussed or to hear about your, how you're using these kind of tools and um, engaging students in peer review as well. Thank you.